whereabouts of William Shakespeare's missing head remains a mystery. After his death in 1616, Shakespeare was buried at Holy Trinity Church in Stratford-upon-Avon, England. However, his grave was disturbed in the 18th century when a curious individual reportedly stole his skull. Despite various investigations and theories, including one suggesting that Shakespeare's skull might have been hidden or reburied to protect it from further disturbance, the true fate of his missing head remains unknown. The mystery continues to capture the imagination of scholars and enthusiasts alike. She was a pioneer, a fearless aviator and a symbol of women's empowerment. Amelia Earhart's disappearance on July 2, 1937, during her attempted circumnavigation of the globe, remains an enduring mystery that has captivated the world for nearly a century. On that fateful day, Earhart, accompanied by navigator Fred Noonan, embarked on the final leg of her journey, departing from Leh, Papua New Guinea, bound for tiny Howland Island in the vast Pacific Ocean. But somewhere between the two landing strips, the duo's Lockheed Electra aircraft disappeared without a trace. She was an accomplished flyer, being the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic in 1932. So you can imagine how the circumstances surrounding her disappearance sparked numerous rumors and theories. Some believe she crashed into the ocean and perished, while others speculate she landed on a remote island and survived for a time. Conspiracy theories suggest she was captured by the Japanese, or even secretly returned to the United States and assumed a new identity. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, Earhart's legacy endures as a symbol of courage, determination, and adventure. Her pioneering spirit and groundbreaking achievements continue to inspire generations of aviators and explorers, while her disappearance remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the 20th century. As long as the mystery endures, so does the memory of a courageous woman who dared to dream beyond the clouds. The death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC sparked intrigue and speculation. Some accounts suggest he fell ill after a night of heavy drinking. Others propose poisoning. In a state of delirium, he allegedly instructed his generals to leave his hands hanging outside his coffin, so all would know he died empty-handed. But rumors whispered of his awakening during the embalming process, trapped in a sarcophagus only to suffocate and be buried alive. Though historically debated, the legend of Alexander's agonizing end serves as a cautionary tale of the perils that accompany power and ambition. Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, the infamous outlaws of the Great Depression era, captivated America with their daring escapades. Their story began in 1930 when they met and fell in love, bonding over a shared disdain for authority and a desire for adventure. Together, they embarked on a crime spree, robbing banks and evading capture across several states. Their exploits enraptured the public, who romanticized Bonnie and Clyde as modern-day Robin Hoods. However, their criminal activities took a deadly turn as they clashed with law enforcement, resulting in several shootouts and fatalities. Despite narrowly escaping capture multiple times, Bonnie and Clyde's luck eventually ran out. In 1934, a team of law enforcement officers ambushed them near Beaville Parish, Louisiana, riddling their car with bullets in a hail of gunfire. The love story of Bonnie and Clyde found a violent and tragic end in a torrent of deadly force. 
But the legend of their whirlwind romance lives on in American folklore, immortalized in songs, books, and films as a symbol of love, loyalty, rebellion, and defiance against the harsh realities of a country in despair. Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna, the youngest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, was born in 1901 into a life of luxury and privilege. Alongside her siblings, Anastasia lived a sheltered existence within the walls of the opulent Russian palaces. However, the tranquility of Anastasia's early years was shattered by the outbreak of World War I and the subsequent Russian Revolution. In 1917, the Bolsheviks seized power, overthrowing the Romanov dynasty and plunging Russia into chaos. Tragically, Anastasia and her family were captured and held under house arrest in Ekaterinburg. In July 1918, the Bolsheviks brutally executed the Romanov family in a basement room. The bodies were then buried in unmarked graves in a nearby forest. However, rumors and speculation persisted for decades. Did Anastasia somehow survive the massacre? Numerous imposters and claims of sightings cropped up across Europe and America. One of the most famous imposters was Anna Anderson, who gained significant attention in the 1920s and 30s, before DNA testing in the 1990s definitively proved she was not Anastasia. As of today, the remains of the Romanov family have been discovered, confirming the fate of Anastasia and her siblings finally laying to rest the mystery of their fate. But Anastasia's story continues to captivate the public imagination, and her tragic end serves as a poignant reminder of the fall of the Romanov dynasty and the tumultuous period of world history in which she lived. Amidst the dimly lit and fog-shrouded streets of London's Whitechapel district, the cobblestone alleys and narrow passageways provided ample cover for nefarious activities. Cloaking the movements of one particular vessel of evil in shadow and secrecy. It was a late night in early April. The air was thick with the stench of death, permeated with an oppressive sense of dread. A murder victim had just been discovered at a street corner. And the authorities were quickly alerted. Crowds of onlookers and police officers gathered around the crime scene, their faces twisted with shock and horror at the sight before them. The flickering glow of gas lamps cast eerie shadows, adding to the macabre atmosphere suffocating the area. Despite the best efforts of law enforcement, Jack the Ripper, as they were named, continued their crimes unabated, instilling a sense of terror and helplessness in Whitechapel. Jack the Ripper's modus operandi was gruesome. They targeted and brutally murdered destitute women, leaving behind a trail of mutilated bodies and inciting widespread fear, hysteria, and suspicion throughout London. There were five confirmed victims in all, and the gruesome acts, followed by a sorely lacking investigation, instilled fear and uncertainty in the district for decades. The identity of Jack the Ripper remains one of history's greatest unsolved mysteries. Their ability to evade capture and their apparent knowledge of anatomy suggested to some that they may have had medical training. For more than a hundred years, many have presented theories and suspects, including butchers, doctors, exhibitionists, and even members of the royal family. But Jack the Ripper's true identity has never been definitively proven. 
the legacy lives on in the grisly details of the crimes and in the lack of closure a terrorized town has had to grapple with for over a century. Countless books, films, and television shows have explored the case, with investigators and amateur sleuths alike attempting to unravel the mystery and unmask the elusive killer. Despite the passage of time, the shadow of the Ripper still looms large over London's history. A chilling reminder of the darkness that lurks in the shadows. In May 1937, the Hindenburg, a massive German airship, burst into flames while attempting to dock at the United States Naval Air Station in Lakehurst, New Jersey. The disaster unfolded in a matter of minutes, shocking the world and claiming the lives of 35 people on board. The tragedy was captured on film and in photographs, immortalizing the horror and devastation of the Hindenburg's demise. As the Hindenburg approached the landing mooring mast, witnesses observed flames suddenly erupting from the airship's hull. The inferno quickly engulfed the hydrogen-filled vessel, sending it crashing to the ground in a fiery blaze. It burst under flames. Get this started, get this started. It's flying and it's crashing. It's crashing terrible. Oh my, get out of the way, please. It's burning, bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast and all the folks between us, this is terrible. This is the worst of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's, it's four or five hundred feet into the sky and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now and the flame is crashing to the ground. All the humanity and all the fans are just speeding around it. The cause of the disaster remains a subject of debate with theories ranging from a static electricity spark to sabotage. Regardless of the exact trigger, the Hindenburg disaster marked the end of the era of passenger airship travel, as public confidence in the safety of hydrogen-filled vessels plummeted. The Hindenburg disaster is a tale of the unwavering human resolve to rise from the ashes of catastrophe. The RMS Queen Mary, once a majestic ocean liner, now harbors tales of ghostly encounters and paranormal activity. Since its retirement from service in 1967, the ship has become a floating hotel in Long Beach, California, but its haunted reputation endures. Numerous reports detail sightings of apparitions, disembodied voices, and unexplained phenomena aboard the Queen Mary. Among the most famous specters is the ghost of a young girl named Jackie, who purportedly drowned in the ship's pool and now roams the corridors in search of her mother. Other eerie occurrences include mysterious footsteps echoing in empty hallways, ghostly figures glimpsed in the shadows, and sudden drops in temperature attributed to supernatural entities. One of the most haunted areas is the engine room, where a tragic accident claimed of the lives of several crew members. Visitors and staff alike have reported unsettling encounters with ghostly workers still toiling away in the dimly lit depths. Despite efforts to debunk or rationalize these occurrences, the Queen Mary's haunted reputation persists drawing thrill-seekers and paranormal enthusiasts from around the world. Whether the tales are products of overactive imaginations or genuine encounters with the supernatural, the haunted Queen Mary continues to fascinate and chill those who dare to explore its haunted decks. In the shadowed alleys of 17th century Italy, whispers of Aqua Tofana echoed like a sinister hymn. Disguised as a remedy for the lovelorn, it was the clandestine creation of Julia Tofana, a woman with secrets as potent as the poison she brewed. Julia and her daughter operated in the shadows for years, selling their sadistic wares under the guise of a harmless beauty product. Desperate souls sought out the potion maker, begging for relief from their tormentors, 
who were often their husbands or rivals. With a bright and pitying smile that concealed her malevolence, Julia would provide them with a vial of aqua tofana to be administered to their supposed oppressor, promising the customer freedom from their suffering. But that freedom came at a cost. Each drop of aqua tofana held a powerful dose of death, its tasteless and odorless nature masking the poison's lethal embrace. Victims would eventually succumb in agony, the elixir taking a slow and grisly toll, while they wasted away, none the wiser to the truth behind their seemingly natural demise. But even death could not silence the victims of Aqua Tofana. As the bodies piled up, whispers of curses and hexes followed Julia wherever she went, a ghastly reminder of the lives she helped to steal. Though the architect of their torment remained ever vigilant, covering her tracks and guarding her secrets, her reign as the Queen of Death ended when she was implicated in the murders of hundreds of individuals. Giulio Tavana was executed in 1659, along with her daughter and several other accomplices. The sinister tale of Aqua Tafana is a chilling reminder of the lengths to which people will go for power, revenge, or escape. Vlad III, known as Vlad the Impaler, ruled Wallachia, a region of modern-day Romania in the 15th century. Infamous for his brutal methods of punishment, he earned his moniker through his favored method of execution, impalement. Vlad's reign was marked by ruthless tactics to maintain order, including impaling thousands of his enemies and perceived traitors. He relished in the horror and spectacle of his punishments, strategically placing impaled victims on stakes for all to see, creating a macabre forest of death known as the Forest of the Impaled. Vlad's cruelty extended beyond impalement. He also employed other forms of torture, including boiling, burning, and mutilation. His reputation for savagery spread fear throughout Europe, earning him a place in history as one of the most notorious tyrants. Despite his brutality, Vlad was also praised for his fierce defense of Wallachia against invading forces, including the Ottoman Empire. His tactics were effective in repelling invaders, but his reign left a legacy of terror and suffering that would endure long after his death. Vlad the Impaler's gruesome rule serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity and the horrors that power can unleash. In the 1920s, pole setting swept America as a bizarre craze. Daredevils perched atop poles for days, aiming for records or prizes. Competitions drew crowds with sponsors, providing food and even entertainment. The spectacle reached its peak when Alvin Shipwreck Kelly sat atop a pole for 49 days in 1929 attracting widespread media attention. Some saw it as a protest against the monotony of daily life, while others viewed it as a testament to human endurance. Despite its absurdity, pole sitting captivated the nation, reflecting the spirits of adventure and eccentricity of the Roaring Twenties. <laughs>